All right, everybody. Hey, it's Bridget Lynn Dolgoff. Today is 20 minutes with Bridget. Ooh, ooh, no. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about um, human, sort of human evolution and um, consciousness upgrade and kind of like where we've been. And so today the topic is the seventh eye chakra, which is right third eye, seventh eye. It's right in the kind of in the seventh eye is like right here in the middle of the forehead. Okay. It's a new chakra um, that we got in 95. But like I said, in a lot of humans, this um, new chakras are still not open. They're there, but they still haven't actually activated. So um, yeah, so a couple of things that I kind of want to lay down before we go look at the, actually, let's, let's go look at that first. Let's go to the blog. Uh oh, hold on one second. Let me get out of here. Because obviously, I did not set it up correctly. <laughs> okay, let's see here. All right. Here we go. We have the blog that goes along with so 20 minutes of Bridget, May 28th, 2020, seventh eye chakra, new chakra. All my videos are on Patreon. So this is what the kind of like the new chakras actually look like. More like a crystal. This is um, as close as I could find to what the color of the seventh eye chakra would be. There would probably be just a little bit more purple that's involved. Um, and then the front or the top of the spinning crystal looks a lot like this, like see how that prisms out, but this color. Okay. Um, anyway, so it talks about um, chakras, it talks about, we're gonna talk about some of this stuff in a second, it talks about um, crystal chakras, element, fire, plasma, sun being sunlight, cosmic radiation. I look at it at, as the fire medicine, um, snake medicine path, new chakras, um, and then kind of about rainbow beings, rainbow light, returning to earth um, as we align ourselves, the medicine energy way, and some stuff about Steiner, food, why food matters. Um, healing the soil, eating from it, or bring our bodies back into alignment with energy all around us as the mineral and metal biologicals take up through eating from the soil and clean water uptakes into our bodies. This will increase the power energy reflective reflection from inside of our bodies into the new chakras from the inside out, not like established chakras from the outside in. I also put... Um, our blood becomes the crystalline structures needed to power the new chakras. So my native teacher used to talk about this, that our blood, you know, the healthier we eat, the more minerals, the more, you know, metals, healthy metals. Um, I mean, everything is always kind of healthy. You know, even arsenic 0 0.06 is actually a homeopathic remedy for arsenic for pain, arthritis, you know, things of that kind of nature. Anything more, or, you know, man-made results of it are deadly. So, yeah. Um, and then I also put the first video here about the new chakras, the BB chakra, and the blog. So you can kind of go back and you can check it out. Also, I've got cryptocurrency, yay, got that up. Still can't get a button on my site, took three days, but at least there's a link, right? <laughs> okay, let's go up here and talk about this, okay. So all right, so there is a collective memory. So I'm going to just kind of put out a few things here. There's a lady whose name was Dolores Cannon. She did a type of hypnotherapy that far reached past the type of hypnotherapy that's used. We'll call that kind of a superficial. The mainstream is a superficial hypnotherapy. Sorry. Um, Dolores Cannon was using one, I believe, that connected into, you know, uh, if you want to call them Akashic Records, the Great Computer in the Sky, whatever you want to call it, the stream, that's what I call it. Um, 
And so she had people that were starting to recollect memories of being a rock and what that, what that was like. Uh, trees, birds, animals. Um, and so I'm saying this because I, we have this in us, right? And it, we also came from the soil and to the soil we shall return. So our bodies are just like soil, um, minerals and metals and you know all of these kinds of things. So we have this um, base level, what's called, Steiner calls reflective mirror consciousness which what it, whatever is reflected onto is kind of projected and reflected back. So we talk about Emoto's work and how Emoto would, would you know, put a word and a feeling onto water, then he would freeze it, and then it would have a certain type of crystal. You know, would have, he could freeze it and then photograph it under a dark field microscope, and it would produce an image. The image is relative to what the reflective intention or feeling image was that was put on. Okay, now Steiner also talks about lower consciousness and karma and how, you know, we were also in the lower consciousness of the animals, which is picture consciousness, um, dreaming, like daydreaming kind of consciousness. Um, there's like no end in beginning. Animals don't notice that they're, you know, dreaming and then standing in a pasture eating grass. It's all the same. It's a dream. One breath, you know, an inhalation and an exhalation, right? And that's their life. So we also have that in us, right? So we also came through the fourth epoch, which was up until Steiner talks about uh, 1410. Um, before that, we were working on human evolution, humans here on the planet were working on feeling, right? Being able to feel, which is the predecessor to intellect, to thinking, right? Which is the next human evolution. Uh, that's what we're working right now with the fifth epoch. So, You know, let's see. So I'm just going to kind of put some stuff out there. This is why I believe that we have a higher evolved race that is, you know, manipulating our reality. Because they're still entrapping us with images. So we can say, um, you know, whether it's TV or music or everything that we see in this world or that's been introduced, medicine, dentistry, um, architectural, um, even, you know, I think the weather is controlled to a certain extent. So everything is controlled because what they're doing is they need to, um, I mean, they use subliminal messages for a long time on TV. We know that. And then they went to the digital pulse, which is a hypnotic, which it's easy for us to stay there because that, you know, that lower consciousness um, that we're just evolving out of, right, is so much easier to go back into. So they have a digital pulse that puts us into a hypnotic effect, puts us into lower animal consciousness, um, and then we're stuck there. So we keep replicating, you know, basically what they're putting out. Um, they use feeling, I mean, huge amounts of feeling. I mean, you can't watch anything on TV anymore. You're not getting emotional over. So that's before 1410 consciousness, that feeling consciousness. Um, picture consciousness that I was just talking about. And then also reflective mirroring consciousness, like that because, you know, we are part mineral kingdom. So that is an easy consciousness for us to fall into too, which means, you know, for example, whenever I used to be around people that had accents, you know, spoke differently than me, I would find within weeks I was talking exactly the way that they talked. Um, that's a mirror reflective consciousness, right? That's a mineral kingdom consciousness, right? Which we are have in us, the lower animal consciousness too, and the feeling consciousness. Um, but we need to take it to kind of the next level. And so this is why I believe that we are being controlled um, by forces that are keeping us in this consciousness. Now, I even think 
a lot of the dreaming medicines, which I've participated in um, for ceremonial usage also throws us back into that picture um, consciousness, that dreaming consciousness. That's what they're called. They're called dreaming medicines. And they help us to connect with beings that we don't really have that big of a connection with right now because we haven't you know, evolved. But as we evolve, we'll come back closer and closer with all those beings who are operating behind the scenes, right? Um, to help us to think. So we're moving into 1410 to 3520, 72. Um, Steiner called it the thinking period, the fifth post atlantium period epoch. And that's where we're going to be thinking, where we can integrate, we can put things together, we can look at two things um, and have a neutral opinion of it, you know, not get so emotionally tied up. And it also doesn't imprint on us in the way. But this is something that we have to do. We have to actively kind of work towards this. And so I was thinking about, you know, why most of us are, why, you know, this control programming that's throwing us back into lower consciousness, um, it's easy for us to be there, but it's highly addictive because whatever they're tossing out, whatever the pictures are, whatever they're dreaming, you know, causing us to see whatever the reflection is, um, that's what we get addicted to. And Steiner talks about it too, about the materialism. Um, and we have to move past that so that they can't actually, you know, keep us in this lower consciousness and also using our feeling to keep rotating us back into it. We need to use our feeling for higher mind, for higher intelligence, for critical thinking, right? Which also leads to action. That's why I'm not a big proponent anymore of, you know, taking dreamy medicines like ayahuasca, um, peyote, DMT. I think these things you can do on your own. You don't need to use those dreaming medicines because also they connect you back up with your lower consciousness and you need to be able to use them in the higher consciousness. Also, I'm not a big proponent of meditation um, because, you know, here you are, you're going back into this picture world, right? This reflective picture world, feeling world, instead of um, you bringing all of those things, which are good skills and talents and traits to have into the higher evolution of thinking. This is where the seventh eye chakra plays out. Um, let's see. Just wanted to, just trying to look at my notes. I kind of try to do notes. Um, so also this is what makes us highly addictive. So they're making us highly addictive um, and materialistic. So whatever they throw out, we got to have whatever we see, we got to have right instead of um, and, you know, drinking and alcohol and a lot of the drugs and everything else, you know, puts us into that, you know, in principle um, and also picture consciousness, that dreaming consciousness, right, that we're good at. So it's easy to be addicted to things that put you back into that because it's a simpler place to be. Um, the tougher place to be is like in shamanism, we really practice sobriety and using everything that we have and all the talents and abilities and all the other consciousness that we've been a part of and moving forward, right? Taking it higher, right? Um, taking it, you know, more internal, really thinking things through using both sides of the brain. Um, let's see, I just wanted to, there's just a couple things that I wanted to, um, so what if you, you know, get kind of a picture or you get a reflection, um, or something of that nature? Um, the correct thing to do is to become active with it and actively do something with it. And I'm talking about in a good way, not a bad way. Obviously, if you know, you're know you getting a picture that you should stab somebody, you are probably gonna need a lot more help um, with what's been reflected and imprinted onto you. You're going to have to clean that up and get out from underneath it because that is not who you are. Um, it's not what you wanna do. It's not how you wanna behave. And it's just stuff that has been embedded and imprinted in you. And you can overcome it. You can totally overcome it. 
It's just picture and images and somebody else's dream and somebody else's information that's been imprinted into you and onto you. Okay, so take the higher road. Okay, um, just wanna say, so like for example, they're always putting applications. You know, I was thinking about um, teeth and dental teeth and one of my first, you know, teachers like 30 years ago, native teachers said that, you know, eventually we'll be able to just once we reach you know higher levels of consciousness you know we'll be able to just oh my tooth is broke it's not doing well and actually hold our attention hold our space hold our energetic form and actually rebuild it you know be our like own 3d printer inside of ourselves energetically right that's the goal is getting it back in our control and controlling our own our own functions in a good way but it, we have to go to the higher road in order to understand all those things right um where we move to the i am right we're moving to the i am okay so i'm starting to sweat it's pretty it's pretty warm here all right um Let's see. Um, so, you know, our key is to hold attention and awareness for long periods of time without falling back into picture consciousness or reflective mirror consciousness or checking out or, you know, falling into addictive behavior. Um, dreamy medicine still, yep, they're still kind of, you know, the old way active action with mind heart and past consciousness that we are evolving into and we're we take all that into what we're evolving into getting out of the everything into our own thoughts understanding and development by experience and thinking right um and using our feeling and our picture and dreaming consciousness and and not falling back into it. And one of the things I see is like people are using this as heightened spirituality, all these things that people are involved in. Burning Man, um, you know, they were doing Dionysus festivals, which is like Burning Man 3,000 years ago, right? During the thinking ele evolution, right? Or the feeling evolution of a human being. So we're like, we've gone back, you know, with all these things that we're involved in and the drugs and everything else. We've gone back 3,000 years. And people think like this is, you know, heightened spirituality. And it's like, no, 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 no. We've got to go forward here and not backward. This is why the seventh eye chakra is not working. Why a lot of the new chakras aren't working in our systems because we're just not even close to being able to figure it out. Everybody always wants to go back to the past, back to the past, back to the past. It's, just, it's not working. Okay, I want to just kind of tell a, a brief story. So, um, gosh, I was probably 19. Um, and this is when I was introduced to the first walk-in that I ever met. And I just want to tell people that walk-ins are not what the general media and public think they are, okay? Walk-ins are never been human. They don't have a soul. Um, they don't operate like we operate. They're more like rays of data and information or rays of light, right? And all these people that'll claim that they're walk-ins are not walk-ins because number one, um, it's a lot more complicated contract to do walk-in and they're so we'll just kind of tell you about this walk-in so um i ended up going to a therapist who was actually working with people who were working with a specific woman who was a walk-in right so most people that wake up and they think they're a walk-in they're not really walk-ins they're probably like possessed demonically possessed right because we've got lower forces and we got upper forests and forces and the difference is is that a body that's taken over it's it's a it's a really lengthy contract between the body the soul and the being who needs to inhabit it to bring 
data and information application downloads of of stuff into this world right so this particular walk-in was named tashira ray that's what she called herself she was unbelievable she could speak simultaneously in four voices she said that um you know speak different things at the same time four different voices right and she said that you know, we have the ability to do all these things. Anyway, one of the things she said, um, I ended up getting involved with this organization she had built and she had put together. Um, and when she was done, she left, right? Uh, and it was through a psychologist that I had been working through because, you know, I was also highly gifted, had a lot of unusual abilities and eventually found my way to this therapist that I worked with for 10 years, which was really helpful, by the way. Anyway, so um, one of the things that Tashira Ray said that she was a light ray that came from the, I think the Elohim, one of the light rays um, of that field vibration, that frequency that has data and information. So she doesn't have a soul, they don't incarnate, right? These are not what these beings do. They're rays of light, they're light fractions and frequencies. But she came into the body of this woman. And how that happened was that she, um, this woman kept trying to commit suicide. And finally, after a long period, there were a lot of highly functioning vibrational beings who came to her and said, we're sorry that, you know, you are suffering so badly, but no matter what you do to this body, you're gonna stay alive a lot longer. So would you allow us to release you from this body so that you can make your trip home in a good way? And we could take it over because we need to send a being down there to um, deal with some of the things that are going on. A woman thought about it for a while and then she did so it was a big agreement it took a period of time uh, for this to happen and then Tashira Ray stepped in or the flash of light took over the body once the soul left the body uh, and that body ended up having you know three different rays of light different types of um, being light you know energy forms uh, utilize the body uh, to establish some codes, I guess, if you will, into the planet. But one of the things Tashira Ray said that, um, another problem is that the body becomes super bipolar and it becomes um, super um, schizophrenic and uh, because the light rays are not souls and it kind of throws off the whole system. So these beings have super hard times keeping the body kind of on track right um and in the direction that they need it to go in order to get this work done because the body isn't evolved enough the human being isn't evolved enough for this type of energy so whatever you've heard about walk-ins is probably 100 percent fictitious internet lies right internet is not the akashic records it is not the creator it's not god so there you go anyway so what Tashira Ray said was that um, in this world, I should be able to stick, I should be able to imagine a wad of cash, you know? How big of a wad of cash? She goes, well, let's see, let's be really selective. So I'm visualizing a wad of cash with a purple rubber band around it, then it's wound in circle, and it's a US dollar, and it's $100 bills, and uh, I want a hundred thousand dollars in U.S. dollar bills wrapped in a circle in a wad with the purple rubber band around it and in my pocket. She said, "Then I should be able to stick my hand in my pocket and pull that out." But in this reality, that's not how it's working. Because you know what? It took me a while to understand this. It's because we haven't evolved to that point yet where we can take the feeling, what does it feel like, the money, the rubber band, the color, the um, reflective mirroring consciousness, 
the lower animal consciousness of the picture and the dreaming, right? I'm dreaming about it, I'm imagining it. And then into the higher evolution of the structure of it, right? And then also the feeling, you know, what would a feeling of a hundred, what a roll of money, what does purple feel like? You know, what does all this stuff feel like? So you got all these lower consciousness that we're working from. And this is why things aren't manifesting is because we haven't made it to the next cycle, right? We haven't made it to the evolution of the critical thinking, bringing that in, you know, developing more understanding, more action, um, having more experience, you know, with these kinds of things. I mean, what we need to do is say, not, you know, that, you know, I just want this, you know, wad of money with a purple bill on it, but we have to think about why, why we, why do we need that? You know, what are we going to use it for? What is it, is it going to do for us? I mean, there's, so you can see, like, you have to evolve this understanding and idea. And so she realized that, you know, we needed more updates and information brought here. And then two other rays of light came at separate times to inhabit that body uh, to bring more stuff here because we weren't on track, right? We weren't on track with where we're supposed to be in our evolution. Okay, so seventh eye chakra, you know, will take us to, you know, I don't even like the word manifestation, but, um, you know, DI, do it yourself. What is it, a DIY? So in the future, people, human being, will be able to do it all themselves, right? Um, all you're going to have to do is use your lower consciousness with your, your higher intelligence, your thinking, your critical thinking, um, and action, utilizing the action force, um, and, you know, probably a lot of other things. I mean, Steiner says that, you know, 3573, most of us will be there and we'll take it into the next epoch. So we'll individually figure all this out. And then in 3573, we will come together around that period and do it collectively. So the good news is that um, you got plenty of time to get it right. Bad news is, is, you know, we're on track to destroy the planet, which means things will bottleneck in order to force this change to come around. So, yeah. Anyway, um, Bridget Lynn Dolgoff, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. <laughs> That's my YouTube channel in case you want to go there. <laughs> um, but it's been 20 minutes with Bridget, May 28th, 2020. And we're talking about the seventh eye chakra. And sorry, 30 minutes longer. Um, but sometimes these things take a little bit more time, even in the simplest form. Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. And uh, we're going to talk to you soon. All right. Uh, next Tuesday. Have a great day. Have a great weekend.